Most times when people ignore their judgments and they look only on their emotions, then they become too sentimental. And I want to emphasize more on that today because we spoke about that earlier. But the Holy Spirit has helped me to see different areas and aspects that he basically showed us in the scripture of when people were too sentimental and they got into trouble. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 23, Moses was asking God if he could enter the promised land. And basically Moses knew that God had already told him that because of your disobedience at the waters of Meribah, you will not enter the promised land. But Joshua will be the one entering and you need to bless him and give him your honor and give him the spirit that is upon you, basically. But Moses still tried to basically conjure God. He told God in Deuteronomy 3 verse 23, that, O oh Lord, you are great and mighty. We have seen your mighty works that you have begun to do. Notice he used the word begun because he wanted God to think there's still more that he could do with Moses. But God knew that. But God had already made the decree that the next dimension of my ministry would be with Joshua. So basically, Moses continued to say that which God is there in heaven and earth that is like you? And then Moses finally said, Lord, I beseech you, let me enter into the promised land. But God told him, don't ask me of this anymore. I will go with Joshua, go up to the Pisgah, to the top of Nebo, and then you will die there. And then when he died, God hid the body of Moses. Moses came back on the mountain of transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17. But God had to make sure that in that timeline, Moses was not there anymore. Because disobedience will be forgiven from God, but judgment does not always go away. Sometimes it can happen here on earth and also in the afterward. Sometimes it can only happen on earth. Sometimes it can only be on the afterward. That's why you can never feel like you have gotten away with something. The scripture says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 that God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap in one way or another. If you sow disobedience, you will reap disobedience in one way or another. If you sow dishonor, lack of respect, and hatred and misogyny, whatever it is, you will reap it in one way or another, even if you are forgiven. Because God doesn't just forgive people just so they can go away. He wants to teach you a lesson sometimes. If you haven't learned your lesson, he will find a way to teach it to you. So continuing on, you don't want to be too sentimental because even God himself did not let emotions get to him because God, we don't always use things that are meant for people to describe God. We don't use things that are basically anthropomorphism basically we don't use that to describe god but when it comes to emotions we don't want to feel like god doesn't have any emotion because god actually can relate god can be angry god can be excited or happy he can be joyous or he can feel like you are doing a good job so he will be pleased with you but at the same time he still wants to relate with us because that's not what he actually is, but he just wants to relate with us because God is greater than we can understand. So he uses that to relate with us. So that's why we can only understand him through those things. And he had to show us in this scripture that he doesn't want to be in a place where he's making emotions, rather making decisions because of emotions or making decisions because of the way people want to make him feel. So that's not always the best way to get God to react. And we also are not supposed to be too emotional to the point where we start to forget judgment because if you look at the book of joshua chapter 9 when the gibeonites had heard that all of which joshua had done to jericho and to i and to the kings of the amorites when they heard of all the conquests and the conquerors that joshua had brought forth then the gibeonites were trying to work willingly meaning that they were trying to be divisive and trying to be smart basically so what they did is they deceived joshua they basically got old clothes they got old wine and bottles of wine and clumsy and um dusty bread basically they got stuff that looked like they were like journeying from a long place like they had been sojourning for a really long time and meanwhile they were really close they were basically really close to where joshua was so they came and they made it seem like they were coming from a far country and they told joshua that make an allegiance with us make an alliance with us and Joshua did not ask the Lord. So that's the mistake he made also. The first mistake he made was that he didn't think like a spiritual man. He taught in the physical realm. He just felt like, okay, these people have come from a far country. Let me just make an alliance with them because they seem like they are really tired and they seem like they are honest. They seem like they actually want to have something aligned with us and they don't want anything against us. So that's the reason why Joshua felt like there's no use in, in denying that alliance. So Joshua did not think in the spiritual mind. He thoughts only based on sentiment and based on emotions and because of that joshua made an alliance without asking the lord and he later found out that they were just neighbors and they were just trying to be on the good side of joshua so they lied to him and because of that he couldn't trust them that well so joshua made them to be servants because he had already made a commandment made a covenant rather that he would not kill them and in the olden days your words were 
just as when you write things on paper and you sign it because people didn't work walk around with papers that they could sign things so whenever you spoke something whenever you said you were going to do something it's basically like a life or death situation no matter what it is it's really hard for you to go back on oaths or covenants but god gave some instances he gave permission and he gave some leverage for people that made oaths that were not really smart and oaths that broke other laws like for example if somebody makes an oath that they will basically do something evil in the church if somebody does something to them then god will make a provision for that person to do something else that would basically take the oath away but god does not like people that make vows or oaths and does not keep it so in the olden days because there were no papers walking around all the time and typing machines and all of that people could not sign things so whenever you spoke something you had to keep that word that you spoke so that's why joshua did not slay the gibeonites they were the servants of joshua and that's why when saul slew the gibeonites in his zeal then god had to punish david and saw for it as well so this is why it's very dangerous to be too sentimental if you go on in the scripture in the book of first kings chapter 20 all the way down from verse 37 to 43 you will notice that after ahab had fought the battle against ben haddad and after that battle ben haddad came because they actually thought they were going to defeat ahab and the israelites so when they were lost when they were defeated they came to the israelites they came to ahab and they basically were trying to conjure him as well whatever they said they would be like thy servant ben hadad by thy servant ben had whatever they wanted to say they would call ben hadad but they would say thy servant before they say the name of the king so basically they were making themselves look like they were servants even after they had just tried to kill them so because of that ahab became sentimental and he decided to make peace with them but that was somebody that god had already orchestrated for destruction because of his wickedness so god basically was angry at ahab for letting that king go away free because he was basically supposed to be destroyed because of his evil so what happened is that there was a prophet that god was speaking to so this prophet told somebody that he saw walking down the road to strike him basically so the person struck him so much that he looked like he was just coming from a war so that was the point of him asking the person to strike him so after that the prophet disguised himself and made himself look like he was just a war warrior rider so basically he came over to ahab and he told Ahab that while your servant was at a battle, your servant was given a certain servant to keep. And the person that gave me the servant told me that if I lose the servant, then I would either pay a sum of money or my life will go for his. And then Ahab told that prophet that you have already chosen your judgment. So now the prophet removes the disguise from his face and tells Ahab that this is the word of the Lord unto you. That this parable i was speaking is because god is telling you that because you have let go someone that i appointed for other destruction your life will go for his so the story continues that ahab now humbles himself before god and then god speaks to the prophet that see how ahab has humbled himself because of what he has done the evil will not come only in his days but will come in the days of his children most of the evil will come in the days of his children so there are certain times you can be sentimental and there's certain times you should never be sentimental. When God is telling you to do something, don't be sentimental. Let it be done. And make sure that God is the one leading you in everything that you do. But if you need to be emotional, you need to go to God. Don't show people your emotions that are meant for God to see. Especially if you're leading people. Certain things you don't want to do in front of them. For example, if you're leading people and the people are going through a lot of things, you don't want to tell them every single thing that you're going through because then they basically don't perceive you as a leader anymore so that's why leaders most of the time they cry to god they don't cry to the people when moses had an issue most of the times he will go to god and god will come in with him when joshua and all the leaders of israel whenever they had big issues that the people could not understand they will go outside of the camp that's why hebrews chapter 13 verse 13 says let us therefore bear his reproach without the camp so certain types of reproaches you bear without the camp you go separate from people and then you commune with god directly and that's why sentiment is dangerous because sometimes god wants you to show that you are being led by the holy spirit and not by your emotions so that's why you have to know when you can use your emotions and when you cannot or rather, can I say when you can be sentimental and when you cannot with the people that you can be and with the people you cannot. So you have to be discerning so you know who to trust and who you can't. That's why in the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 16, there was a certain damsel crying and saying, these men be the servants of the Most High God coming to show us the way of salvation. But this damsel was possessed with the spirit of divination and she was a soothsayer. But Paul and his 
disciples that were with him, they didn't know at first because they were basically dwelling on a level of sentiment. So when they heard it at first, they were basically thinking it was actually somebody that cared about salvation and somebody that was basically serving God. But this lady that was saying this was possessed by a spirit of divination. So after a while, Paul became grieved in his spirit and then his discernment kicked in. This lady that was saying this was possessed by a spirit of divination. So after a while, Paul became grieved in his spirit and then his discernment kicked in. His clear sightedness kicked in, his sobriety kicked in, and he told that damsel, commanded her and said, you spirits, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the spirit came out. So that's what happens when you are focused, when you are sober in the spirit, when you think from your spiritual mind, when you think like God, because we are supposed to reflect this image. So that's why you need to make sure you don't become too sentimental. Because... The scripture says that nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. And nobody can curse Jesus if the person is in the Spirit. And this Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And that scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. It's basically saying, even if you put the name Jesus on it, and it's not from the Spirit, then you are not saying Jesus. You can literally say Jesus is Lord, but if the person is saying it and the person is not in the Spirit, those that are in the Spirit will be able to discern and know that this person is not saying that from the spirit so it's not just about the fact that you can say it out loud with your mouth or you can't it's basically saying that whatever the person does even if they say jesus is lord even the person's name is jesus because there's a lot of people that are spanish their name is jesus or you know different countries have people that are named jesus but not jesus christ so basically even if the person professes jesus christ even if the person talks like a man of god if that person is not saying it in the spirit and you can discern that this person is carnal is saying it in the flesh and this person is basically wicked then you know that this person is not in the spirit like that scripture says and that's why there was a certain soothsayer, not a soothsayer rather, he was a sorcerer. His name was Bar Jesus. This was in the book of Acts chapter 13. So Paul was trying to preach to a governor, basically, a deputy. And Bar Jesus was trying to limit the gospel from coming to the deputy. He was basically creating an atmosphere that would cause the deputy not to listen to what Paul was saying. So Paul looked at Bar Jesus and said, O fool of all subtlety, and thou enemy of the devil, thou enemy of righteousness, and child of the devil, rather, he said that. Are you not going to cease from perverting the ways of righteousness? And he told him that the hand of the Lord is upon you and you will be blind for a season. So Paul cursed this person whose name was Bar Jesus. Jesus was actually in his name, but he was basically a fake kind of Jesus, basically opposite of Jesus. He was basically an apostate. And because of that, Paul cursed the person. And Paul was discerning enough not to dwell on sentiments, not to think that this person was trying to basically do the same thing that he was trying to do. The person was not on Paul's side, so he cursed them. That's why you need to have a high level of discernment. And the last story I'll tell us today is in the book of 1 Kings chapter 13. There was a certain man of God. He came and he was coming to Bethlehem, basically. Coming through Bethlehem. And because of his journey, God told him that don't turn back the way you are going. The way you came from. But go straight, basically. Don't go back. So he was going to where he was going. And he met Jeroboam. And because of all the sinful things that Jeroboam had been doing, he cursed Jeroboam. And Jeroboam's hand withered. And he had to pray for Jeroboam's hand to come back to normal. And Jeroboam asked him to come to his house to eat something. But he told Jeroboam that God told me to keep going forward. So he was doing well so far. But then another prophet that was in the land heard what happened. And he, in his jealousy or envy, he came over and told him that an angel told me that you should come back to my house. So this man of God ignored what God told him personally to go with what another prophet was telling him. And then he was like, okay, let me go with the man of God that told me that an angel told me to come back to his house. So you notice he said an angel. So basically there's angels of God and angels of the enemy. So this prophet should have been more discerning. He wasn't discerning. He let his sentiment get in the way. And because of that, basically the same prophet that lied to him spoke and told him that because of your disobedience, when you go outside, a lion will slay you. And it actually happened because God had to judge what basically the prophet did because he disobeyed God, basically. So it doesn't matter if somebody is saying something in the spirit now and then the next second they say something in the flesh. It's not something for you to be confused about. It happens all the time because people don't submit themselves completely to God. So sometimes they can be speaking in the spirit one minute and the next 10 minutes they're speaking in the flesh. The same thing happened in Matthew chapter 16. If you read about how Peter was telling Jesus Christ that you are the Christ and then Jesus finally unveiled Peter to himself and said, you are Cephas and because of that, what you said, I will build my church on this revelation and the gates of hell will not prevail and later on peter said to jesus that you don't have to die and then jesus looks at peter and says get behind me satan so the person that was just called the rock was called satan so basically that's why you should understand you should dwell 
on spiritual discernment and sobriety, not only on sentiment. And make sure that your sentiment is subjugated to your spiritual man and that your spiritual man is subjugated to the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.